Did you know that the development of all our telecommunications, as you know, based on satellite technology, is all based on the precision of pi? Um, pi is the diameter of the circle. If that's one, we take that distance one like a shoestring and bend it. So there's one, two, and three. So by the time there's three parts, there's a little gap here. So pi is 3.14 and a bit. So for thousands of years, we've been trying to advance the precision of pi. So they knew this thousands of years ago, even in, way back in Egyptian time. So what's happening is that the satellite technology is based on signals that are sent. Say, say I want to call, I'm on my, my mobile phone, I want to, I'm in Byron Bay here, I want to call my daughter in the, the tweet in the Gold Coast up here. So the time it takes for the signal to go from here to the satellite and bounce back to where I want to call, it takes 0.22 of a second. But that little fraction of a second is resulting because of a, an error in pi because pi is actually based on the golden ratio 3.144 so that slight error of the signal can be corrected so that's why i call golden pi which is 3.144 it's a correctional code and it's going to advance the technology so that we can access the many worlds and we can advance our technology um i got in contact with um uh, an ex nasa dude who read one of my um, articles in around 2012, I did an article on the true value of pi, and this is what he wrote. He said, I should have, his name's Smokey. He said, I should have remembered back in my tracking days, working with NASA, that pi had been changed to accommodate the entry and the exit of spacecraft using a planet for slingshot acceleration to the next planet. This is regarding the Voyager craft. But I never thought too much about that in those days. This now needs to be applied to our coils, but we need to know exactly which pi to use for that condition. So, so this email confirmed that even NASA today know that when they're building coils and cylinders, it's always a fraction too short. So the true value of pi must be a fraction more than 3.141. And to know what that is, we have to understand the relationship of the square. So Pythagoras knew that if this square is one, two, three, four in its perimeter, can we make a circle that's also equal to four units? So this is called the circling of the square. And you can see that the diameter is enlarged from that point to that point called 1.272. That's called the golden root because 1.272 times itself gives us the golden ratio, the divine proportion of 1.618. So when we recalculate all our mathematics to be in resonance and in tune with the mathematics of pine cones and sunflowers, even the distances of the planets from the sun and every part of the human body, like where the elbow bends, if this is eight, that's 13, which is the pine cone mathematics. So when we recalibrate our understanding of the cosmos by working with the golden ratio, we're going to learn that pi is based on the golden ratio. So let's take um, the mathematics of the pyramid. So there's the base of the pyramid. So this is one, two, three, four. So this value of four divided by the height of the Egyptian pyramid, which is 1.272, actually creates an antenna. So this is a, a cosmic antenna based on golden pi. It's the new frequency that when we work with this antenna, we are able to connect to uh, more ecosophical development in our satellite technology. So that's why when we put like a mobile phone to our ears, a lot of people are actually getting um, physical damage to their brain because the harmonics, the frequencies aren't corrected. And um, we know that the, the frequency for satellites is using one to 50 gigahertz. A gigahertz is one times 10 to the ninth power. That's one with nine zeros after it. So this obsession with pi and, and, and accessing all its decimals correctly is, is a doorway or a portal into the physics of um, a higher consciousness. So that's why when we take um, the pyramid, imagine we took the pyramid, and we, which is called grid point one, imagine we could blow it up to the size of the earth. So we take grid point one, small pyramid, and which is this one here, we take the pyramid in Egypt, called grid point one, and as we make it 
in, fit inside the sphere of the Earth, the scale ratio is called 1 is to 43,200. So we have to multiply this base by 43,200. But all the famous um, scientists like Bruce Cathy, um, they knew, and Buckminster Fuller, they knew about harmonics. So when we drop the zeros, 43,200 is actually the number of seconds in the day and a night. So this is a time harmonic. And 432 is actually important because when we square that number, we actually get the speed of light. So, so you take the number 432 of the pyramid, you square it, you get 186,624 um, mile, um, yeah, which is the speed of light, speed of light in miles per second. So where does that number 432 come from? It comes from a sequence called triple nine, there's a 27, and when we keep doubling, 27, 54, 108, 216, 432. We keep getting all the harmonics of the ancient temples and the diameter of the sun is 864,000. These are all harmonic numbers. It's all encoded in the pyramid. And that's why the pyramid gives us this value of four, one, two, three, four, divided by its height, gives us um, four divided by 1.272, gives us the true value of pi, which is four divided by 1.272, it gives us this precise frequency, 3.144605511029693144. So this is the journey into a higher consciousness where we're in resonance with all that nature is. Thank you.